Hello and welcome to Reboot Theater. I'm your host, The Invisible Man. If you grew up in the late 80s or early 90s, then you probably remember Carmen Sandiego. Yeah. Starting with the hit computer game in 1985, Carmen Sandiego quickly became a staple in the educational video game industry, as well as the action-adventure game industry. It taught kids about geography and world cultures, while also being very fun and entertaining. The game also spawned spin-offs like Where in Time is Carmen Sandiego, which taught history, Where in Space is Carmen Sandiego, which taught the solar system, Word Detective, Math Detective, the list goes on and on. Then in 1991, there came a game show based off these games. The show would feature three kids competing to find one of Carmen's partners in crime. And once they succeeded, they got a chance to find Carmen herself in the bonus round. If the gumshoe succeeded in finding Carmen, they won a free trip to anywhere in North America. The show was cheesy to be sure, with a lot of silly things to hold the attention of younger kids. <laughs> But to be fair, I think it worked. Yes, it was very low budget. The sets looked fake, and the animation was really bad. But for a 90s game show, this was pretty good. It was entertaining, educational, featured the amazing Lin Thigpen as the chief. And remember, with acne gum shoes on the prow, Carmen will throw in the towel. And of course, Rockapella. <laughs> This outstanding a cappella group stole the show every time. They added sound effects to the games, took part in sketches, and sang the greatest theme song of any show ever. Well, she sneaks around the world from Vienna to Carolina. She's a sticky finger filcher from Berlin down to Belize. Take you for a ride on a slow boat to China. Tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego. Sadly, I never got to watch this show in its original run. I think I was just a little too young for it. But one thing I definitely grew up with was the sequel. I'm sending you through the time port to Kentucky in 1775. There's something very special I want you to steal. Bring it back to me in this loot orb when you have it. Time pilots, Sir Bile just stole something from the past. You've got 28 minutes to get it back, or history will change forever. As you can see, this show had a much bigger budget. It featured live actors, better sets, much better animation. And while there was no rock cappella, it did have a theme song that was almost as good. We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. Chronos Hammer, engines hot, Biovillas, Evil Pop. This is one kick ass theme song! I know everyone says this show wasn't as good as the original, but I don't care. It was still really good! Tell me where in time is Carmen San Diego. Shot her crime. This show was, and still is, amazing. After that show ran for two more seasons, there came a cartoon called Where on Earth is Carmen San Diego? It followed Carmen inside a computer game being played by a kid known only as Player, with in-game characters Ivy and Zack chasing after her. Carmen would steal things, then the Acme agents would decipher her clues to determine where she was going next. It was a pretty enjoyable cartoon, except for one thing. Go ahead, Chief. Hello, 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 what? governors. Scotland Yard just called. It seems Carmen San Diego has stolen death is Stonehenge. <laughs> oh, what did they do to the Chief? Lynn Thigpen was the greatest Chief you could have asked for. And then you replaced her with this? I'm in a good mood because I've always wanted muscles like this. Pretty buff, huh? I'll be back. Oh, God. Please tell me this voice actor isn't still doing work. Oh, this voice of Squidward. Hmm, well played. So today we're going to look at the newest incarnation of Carmen, the Netflix animated series. Does it do justice to the Miss of Misdemeanor? Let's find out. Right off the bat, we see the new series has a film noir introduction. While the other shows prided themselves on having big, flashy intros, this one emphasizes how Carmen is a woman of mystery with secrets galore. Hush! 
We then meet our primary antagonists, Inspector Chase Devineau and his partner Julia Argent. Miss Argent, you have been on the Force Melee a fortnight, have you not? You have so much to learn, and since you have been assigned to my department, um, uh, I, Chase Devineau, will be your teacher. She's right there! Huh? La Femme Rouge! So, in case you haven't guessed yet, the Inspector is the comic relief on this show. We then meet our lady in red, Carmen Sandiego, voiced by Jane the Virgin herself, Gino Rodriguez. On top of the world. Save the sightseeing for after the job. <laughs> Player, glad to hear you're on board. Let's get this party started. Another noteworthy change is that Player is her ally this time, as well as Ivy and Zack. Carmen steals things, Player is her guy in the chair, guy in the chair, and Ivy and Zack are her Ron stoppables. You know, the goofy sidekicks who run interference for the real spy. Well, this just became worth a whole lot less. <laughs> and a sense of humor! I can already tell, this is a version of Carmen I'm going to love. Stop, thief! Inspector Chase Devenol, Interpol. Chase, huh? Let's see what's in a name. Oh yeah, she is cool. I order you to stop! Say for how long? It was inclined! <laughs> well, that's the end of him. Did you just. Never mind that! Oh, silly me! It's one of those cartoons! You know, the kind where you can do anything you want and there are no real consequences? <laughs> Carmen San Diego. You know, that line really doesn't work when you just saw her. You already know where in the world she is. Portier, France. What you should have said was, What is the exact latitude and longitude of Carmen San Diego? But that one doesn't really roll off the tongue as well. Carmen makes a quick getaway on a train, while the inspector follows her in his car. Then she meets a face from her past, Crackle. Well, well. Red! Carmen! He asks Carmen her story, and we get a flashback to how she became the world's greatest thief. She grew up as an orphan on a remote island, where she was given the name Black Sheep, and raised by a collective of villains known as Vile. The villains trained her to become a master thief, with the hopes that she would one day eventually become an agent for Vile and steal expensive treasures. But once she went on her first mission, she had a change of heart and recognized just how cruel the villains were. Crackle, remember, leave no witnesses. Wait, what do you mean, leave no witnesses? Gray, no! My entire upbringing was a lie. Stealing isn't a game. It does harm people. Especially when you're willing to steal lives. So Black Sheep plans to escape the island and get back at Vial for lying to her all those years. I'm an IT trainee, and it's imperative that I check the server room pronto for, um, loose cables. Ah, using the classic Carmen theme as elevator music. You're clever, all right. Huh? Whatever can the problem... Bait and switch. So Black Sheep steals Vile's files, and the whole island goes on lockdown. And so she grabs a disguise to escape. Whoa. Code Red. Black Sheep sneaks off the island on the bookkeeper's boat and contacts Player. It's time to see the rest of the world. And no more vile. You'll need a passport. And I don't think Black Sheep's gonna cut it. You do have a name, don't you? It's... Carmen. Carmen San Diego. And from then on, Carmen made it her mission to steal from Vile and set right what they stole. The inspector still isn't convinced that Carmen is a good person, and he makes it his mission to find her. As a result, he becomes the person of interest to the Acme Detective Agency, who introduces him to their leader. Inspector Chase Devineau, thank you for joining us. Who are you? You can call me Chief. Oh yeah, I already like this Chief a whole lot more. 
You also seek the Crimson Shadow? We're seeking an army of shadows, whom we have reason to believe call themselves Vile. The Inspector and Miss Argent are both recruited to the agency to classify and monitor evildoers, which gives them jurisdiction to chase Carmen all over the world. And all over the world indeed! Carmen goes to Indonesia, Ecuador, Amsterdam, Sydney, you never know where in the world she'll be. In each location she uncovers a vile plot, fights a vile operative, and shuts down the plot. Most of the villains are okay, but not really that great. Except for one. Now this is how you do a cool villain! Red is a smart color for you. It will hide the stains. She can turn any paper into a deadly weapon. She's like an old school Bond villain. Super menacing. Super deadly. She's just so cool. Pufferfish. Very lethal. It will give you a thousand paper cuts unless you tell me the next drop location. No, not my hands. Not my hands! <laughs> more for season two, please! I want more paper star! More! So yeah, this is a solid series. I recommend it to any Carmen fan. I know it gets off to a rocky start, but this show has some serious potential. Now there's only one thing left to do. Do it, Rockapella! I'm the Invisible Man, and when there's a brand new take on an old classic, I got it covered. Carmen San Diego.